Hello, my name is Harold Davis, an internationally known digital artist and award-winning photographer, as well as a best-selling author. My most recent book is Composition and Photography. The subtitle is Working with Photography Using Design Principles, which reflects my long-standing obsession with photography and design and using design principles to enhance photography. This past year, I was honored with the highest professional award granted by the Photographic Society of America, as well as having several of my images selected by the United States as postage stamps, including the very popular Tulip Pano Forever stamp. I am very excited for you to see my new Left Bank Art Spring introductions at the High Point Market. I'd like to tell you some of the stories behind these images. I am so lucky to get to travel extensively for my work, and all of these new images were made in my journeys around the world last year, including the American Southwest, France, and Italy. Let's start with Lonely Tree. On the high plateau, south of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in Colorado, heading down to New Mexico. You have one of the most sparsely populated arid grounds in the southwest of the United States. This is very low population area, very hot in the summer, very cold in the winter, not hospitable land. I was so struck when I came upon this lonely tree by itself, thriving in apparently the middle of nowhere, that it seemed to me that it was worth study for the light and to photograph it in a way where it made a great encapsulation with the entire frame. Heading further south on this plateau, almost at the New Mexico border, there's the Cambre and Toltec Scenic Railroad, one of the few narrow gauge steam train operations that's still in force and running steam trains in the country. I was able to time my uh, visit there when the one of the daily trains was leaving the station. So I headed up the road to the next crossing and waited for it to get a full head of steam and then captured the frame so that the steam uh, surrounded the engine and made a kind of circular frame within the rectangle of the image. It was very exciting to me to get to capture this steam train. And of course, the engineer knew what I was doing and gave me a honk and a wave as he went past. And then they they barreled up with a full head of steam and went around the curve in the end. It was the greatest thing. A little bit later in the year, in the autumn, I was traveling in the Alsace region of France. This is a great valley along, great in terms of large valley along the Rhine River that's been a border between France and Germany for centuries. And on the French side, you have flat land leading to the front range of mountains, which is uh, filled with castles and ruins and things like that. In the town of Kalmar, sometimes called the Venice of France, is a network of canals. This network of canals is filled by the Canal du Colmar, which goes into the Rhine River and gives water into this system of canals. So it was really a fun experience to travel along the canal, find an overpass and a place to photograph the canal to give a sense of the great vista receding. While I stayed in Kalmar, I visited some of the little villages nearby, and one of those above it, there's what are called the ruins of the three castles. So with this image of the ruins of three cap castles, I was able to get all three castles in one photograph by clambering over some of the ruined walls to uh, capture them. What's fun for me about this is that these castles were built in the oh, nine or ten hundreds, many, many millennia ago, but the they were ruined in 1466 in the War of the Six Coins. So these have been ruins for a long time, and the ruins themselves have taken on a new life, which I tried to convey by framing the image with a sense of the tree that's around them. Later in the year, 
I was traveling in Umbria, which is the province in Italy that is to the south of Tuscany, between Tuscany and the outskirts of Rome. And in this great vale that was Roman territory, surrounded by Roman roads and ancient Roman ruins like the Bridge of Augustus, I was able at sunrise to be up on a high perch of a balcony capturing the fog running through the Umbrian countryside. So this is where I made the images, autumn landscape and morning come softly to convey the feeling of being there high above the autumn landscape in this very peaceful but exotic and wonderful environment. Finally, the two images, Gothic Reflections and Reflection San Marco, com combine two interesting aspects of photography. They reflect some of the issues with the world around us because the way that the water has been rising in Venice at the high tide, when the moon's in the right position, the water floods the Piazza San Marco. At this point, this is kind of intentional because they have a new huge system of um, mechanical coffer dams that are run by great engines that control the water inflow into Venice. So this is one way of responding to global warming and the problem of rising sea levels is to allow it under certain conditions. Nonetheless, I was really excited when I got to the Piazza San Marco and saw the reflections of the Venetian Gothic architecture of these ancient and wonderful buildings in the water. So this image allowed me to make a essentially um, a, com a design composition involving the reflections and the Gothic art shapes. And in the reflection San Marco image, the, the lines that are that were naturally in the square and to combine the shapes and forms with the reflections and also some sense of how the world is changing at the same time to make a very interesting image that is both a design statement and something that should make one think a little about what's happening to our world. So thank you very much for this opportunity to share my work with you. Very best wishes, Harold.